that if you get an inheritance, it's not on the table for divorce. Unless you do the most stupid thing that you could, which most people will do. Hi, Jeffrey G. Mersachi, the plain English attorney, and welcome to the video. Today, we're going to talk about a situation where a son who's going to end up being the executor and trustee overseeing the parents' estate is concerned about his brother because he sees things potentially going for divorce. So what can be done? So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, this is a bit of an older one, so I didn't actually put my two cents in. I will do that in this video. So divorce and inheritance question. In the next few years, my brother and I will be splitting our parents' estate, currently the $10 million range if that matters. Tennessee is where we live. Brother is unhappily married to his first wife. I just think it's kind of interesting he's calling it his first wife as if it's almost guaranteed there's going to be a second. <laughs> Things have gotten worse over the years and he expects divorce to be a reality. The estate assets will only be given to us, not to our spouses. Money-wise, his wife always made more money than he did. They have no savings or 401k any longer, pretty much always broke. She controls their finances and spends everything they make, plus running up debt. Would the money he receives from inheritance be considered marital assets in regards to a divorce and possibly be split? I think some states would factor this in as it was not earned by either of them during the marriage. No prenup exists. Okay, well, that's actually the first problem. That's the brother's issue. There's no prenup. And considering she's the one who always made more money, it's actually kind of odd that she didn't insist on the prenup. That's a whole other planning realm. And I've actually got a book that I'm working on, which hopefully will be out soon talking about how you can defend yourself during a marriage. But for this one in particular, we do have a situation where it's the concern is the parents' assets. So let's go ahead and look a little bit further into the situation. If you think it's important for educational videos like this to get out there, then please help us out by subscribing to the channel. He is very scared of change, so I don't see him initiating divorce unless something major happens. That being said, he is and has been very unhappy and knows he would be better off getting a divorce. I worry about him, quote, seeing what will happen and end up costing him and their kids a lot of money. Their children are in their 20s and not living at home any longer. Besides, get a divorce now. Any other suggestions for him? Thanks in advance for all the responses. Well, this is also bringing in the concern that I end up seeing with a lot of my own clients who have the daughter-in-law or the son-in-law that they are not quite sure of or they absolutely know it's a bad situation. They not only want to protect money to go down to the kids, but they don't want it to go to that spouse at all under any circumstances to the point where they don't want to leave it directly to their child without some mechanism to make sure whatever's left gets to the grandkids and not to the spouse. A very common desire to do this, even if there isn't the problem like we have in this situation. So how do you protect that son and the children? Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the legal community did. If the parents have $10 million, they need to talk to real attorneys about protecting their assets. Short answer is that if they aren't divorced, the wife could ask for the money, 
to be split in a future divorce. It may or may not be split in many jurisdictions. It would not be, but not all. In any event, wife could certainly make a claim to it and complicate things even if she lost the case. You also need to accept the fact that your brother probably won't divorce her and you should probably start interfering in his life. Let him be a big boy and protect himself. If he doesn't, so be it. Okay, very common. But my clients who have this situation with one of their kids, fine, they're a big, they're a big boy or they're a big girl. They can make their own decisions about their life, but not with my money. So that becomes the issue. It's not about his money and what he's doing and the fact that he should get a divorce or whatever. We're talking about what's going to happen with the parent's money. So let's go deeper. And this is, a, we have got a response here from the person who's posting it. It's his brother who's going to have the potential issues down the road. My questions are more because I'm going to be the executor of her estate, meaning mom. I'm only mentioning him because he asked me for advice. I don't think that is interfering when it is asked for, but whatever. I do understand anything can be asked for in a divorce, but wanted some confirmation of what I believe to be true about premarital assets such as inheritances in my state. Okay, so yeah, it's not interfering when someone asks the question. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other advice that's coming out here. You may be able to have your father, well, it's the mother, rewrite her will in a way that keeps your brother as the beneficiary but does not transfer the asset to his spouse. Maybe so the property is not given to your brother, but placed in a trust for his benefit and then the benefit of his children. Actually talk to a local trust and estate specialist. Now that's good advice, but one thing I haven't heard yet is that the planning should be done through a revocable living trust as opposed to a will. Anytime you're dealing with a will, you mean probate. And once it gets into probate court, suddenly it's a lot tougher to defend the wishes because all it really takes is for someone to file something saying, hey, yeah, this is, we're not happy with this. And then everything comes to a grinding halt. When you're using a revocable living trust, you're talking more about having to actually civilly sue someone and now they got to put up their money and it's not really holding things up in a court sense. Uh, the other thing is if this were done through a will and there was a, quote, testamentary trust put into the plan so that brother's assets would be protected, it's very likely that this would be governed and overseen by the court until the money was gone or the brother died. So this we could be talking about decades of a court overseeing something. If it's done through a revocable living trust, the court doesn't have to oversee it. All right. <clears throat> Another attorney, that's what I was going to say. Dude, with an estate of this size, don't muck around. It's worth the money for the attorney. Look at it this way. If he gets half of $5 million and she takes half in a divorce, that's $2.5 million. Spending, say, $25,000, which I think would be a lot on an attorney to get things done right, is just 1% of the money he would be saving. Generally, my advice, oh, sorry, this is a non-lawyer, but someone with a depressing amount of experience in these matters would mirror the, so the poster's work with your parents so that instead of going to him directly, your brother's share goes to a trust with someone he trusts, not himself, as trustee like you perhaps. Done right by a good trust and a state attorney that would be touchable, that wouldn't be touchable in a divorce or bankruptcy since you say he and his wife are in debt in a big way. But you need a good attorney. Very, very true. And here's the response. You are absolutely right, and I appreciate the input. We, my mother that is, does have a good trust specialist attorney she has been working with. I really wanted some high-level thoughts from others 
that either do this professionally or have been through it themselves. I'm going to be the executor of her estate, and I wanted to gather up as much info as I could so I don't screw anything up. My mother is the remaining one and is in the process of redoing her will. Oh, God. As my stepfather's estate was just closed. She does have a good trust attorney. He and I, but not our spouses, will be the only direct beneficiaries. A trust is one of the options available, and I was hoping someone, somebody mentioned it. I understand them fairly well, but wasn't sure if that was one of the better options. Honestly, for my brother, it is likely the best way to go, as he has never been great with money. I appreciate your response. Look, if this is a good trust and estates attorney, they shouldn't be recommending a will with this particular type of problem coming down the road. And in fact, they should probably be looking at a kind of separate long-term trust to be set up for the son or really, really integrate it into the revocable living trust as a way to protect the money for that son over the long term and make sure it doesn't go to the spouse. Now, this is a big thing, and I'm seeing a lot of attorneys that just end up getting it wrong. Oh, I put into my revocable living trust, the client wants if the son dies before they do, then it goes to their kids. Yeah, that's pretty standard. But what if the son receives the money and then dies later? So in other words, mom goes first, he gets the money, and then he dies. Well, then that money goes according to his plan, not to mom's plan. It doesn't matter. He already got the money. And if his plan or no plan is, well, everything goes to the spouse, then you're out of luck. She still gets the money. The grandkids don't. And based on what we've seen here, she's probably going to spend it all. Instead, it has to be at, the, at mom's level, making sure it stays protected during the lifetime of that son. So when he dies, it has to go where mom wants it, not according to this son's plan. So let's see what else we got here. The trust is most is the most likely answer that doesn't provide it to him as a direct asset, which might become part of the marital estate. Go to the trust attorney, explain everything, and have her set up something that keeps the money out of his personal property while enabling him to benefit from it. Okay. I'm not going to go too deeply into this just because we've got a whole webinar on it. It's inlawplanningwebinar.com where you can go into all of this stuff. But really, here's how most inheritances get lost in a divorce. It's true in most states, based on the research the original poster put up, that if you get an inheritance, it's not on the table for divorce. Unless you do the most stupid thing that you could, which most people will do. They get this bunch of money and then the spouse starts whispering in their ear, Oh, honey, we've got all this money now. We can finally get that dream house. All right. They go get a realtor. They start looking around. They start finding the place. They go, oh, this is the place. Oh, do we need to get a mortgage? Oh, no, we're paying cash. Oh, okay. Get the information to the closing attorney. The closing attorney's like, oh, well, you're a married couple, so this is going to be a, a tendency by the entirety, which is joint with the right of survivorship for married couples. They buy the house several years later, or maybe not even that long. Uh, the spouse is taking up with the personal trainer, and they're running around, and it's like, no, I'm getting a divorce, and that's it. And the spouse comes back, and I, I joke about this, and the personal trainer's in their you know, their sports car out in front of the house while they're knocking on the door. I want half the house, the spouse says. But all that money came from my parents. It's not yours. Oh, well, I went to a divorce attorney and you co-mingled it. I want half the house. And the problem is that they're right. They're very likely going to get half the house because they didn't keep it separate. If it goes into something that I, we call an asset management trust, 
they don't own it. If they want the house, the trust can buy the house and own it and let him live there. And so when the spouse comes back and wants it in divorce, the son wouldn't even own it. The trust would. And then they can start the eviction process on the daughter-in-law who's been running around. The trustee can do it. So that's really the best way to preserve it. First, keep it out of probate too. Make sure there's a protective trust to receive the funds. And then when that son passes on eventually down the road, what's left over isn't going to the spouse. It's going to the kids. Okay. So please go ahead and like this video. Likes are the biggest... Uh, it's the biggest factor in all of these platforms putting the information out further. So if you thought this information was valuable, please go ahead and click. And if you want to, please subscribe as well. Now, as I always, I always tell my clients, please stay safe, plan ahead and enjoy life. And whatever you do, make it a great day.